What's good, YouTube man? It's your boy Coco Cole here, back with another banger for y'all boys. Today. And hey, today we're gonna be going over the things you don't know about NBA 2K25's builder system, man. If you guys enjoy this type of content, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 4,000 subscribers, and without further ado, let's hop right into it, man. So we just got this question from Zach. I can't pronounce this man's name from Zach. Zinnerman, Tenerman, whatever the fuck his name is, man. And uh, his question was, uh, the question was, are there changes to the total amount of attribute points in the Maya player building? And his answer was, each year, the overall rating in my career goes through a massive overhaul across the board. We're always looking to maximize ways for players to make fun and unique builds while also preventing metas and demigods from sneaking through the cracks. Yeah, okay. While there are literally hundreds of thousands of different my player possibilities out there, we've created more tools that pull out the outlers, thus allowing to increase the flexibility and the number of attributes of a user can apply to their player. In the end, in all most cases, if you recreate a build, uh, recreate a build from NBA 2K24 and 2K25, you'll end up with a lower overall that leaves room to allow you to pump in some more attributes and basically what this uh question is is that he's asking that because of the cap breakers are there a set amount of attributes per you know what i'm saying cap breaker and he just answered that question so basically he's saying that there won't be meta bills and stuff like that which is a lie the 2K community always gonna find a meta build to make in, in in the first place. You know what I'm saying? There's always gonna be a meta. You know what I'm saying? But I think there's more room for diversity this year than any other year's 2K. But we'll just wait and see. And the next question we have is, what happens when your takeover expires? And the answer is, takeover is quite different than what you have been used to. It's really hot and cold meter that flows up and down based on how you're playing. There are no significant gains or drops to, to the meter. When level five expires. Your takeover ability expires, and do you and you simply drop back to about halfway point between level four and level five? This is the same for each level you drop out of. If you drop out of level four, you go halfway points to level three and four, and so on. So basically, when your takeover expires, because you can't activate it anytime you want to, it activates on its own if you perform hot in the game. So once you drop, you drop back down to the halfway point of level, whatever level your takeover is. Another question is, that Zach asked was, well, somebody asked Zach was, can other people see if you have cap breakers? Yes, the cap breakers and 2K cards show up in 2K cards, the attributes menu, etc. So basically, 2K introduced cap breakers and he's answering the question, you know what I'm saying? Because if when cap breakers, you unlock cap breakers, though, that means you get the overall uh, increase your attributes in whatever category, as long as it's maxed out. So if you have, a, let's say you have an 85 three ball, you can cap break it to a 90, as long as it's, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what's the proper term I should use? As long as it doesn't affect, you know, as long as it goes with the height and weight of your build. Another question we have, uh, I see there are less shooting badges. Are these combined in other badges? Many of our badges, and his answer was, many of our badges from 2K24 have been combined with others to make them more all in incapacitating in 2K25. Catch and shoot is rolled into set shot specialist. Blinder is rolled into dead eye. Green machine, however, has been completely removed. So yeah, I, I figured that they, you know what I'm saying, group the badges together, you know what I'm saying, but Green Machine is completely gone, it's gonna be interesting to see. I think it's because, you know, uh, it's gonna be some flexibility with the shooting. So basically, you know how uh, they were saying like, uh, what, was, what was it called, low risk, high risk? Yeah, so it, it's White's gonna be able to drop for players who are not as good at the game, basically. Another question somebody had for Zach was, what are the height caps for each position? In 2K25, his answer was, the max heights where each position are, point guard 6'7", shooting guard 6'8", small four 6'10", power four 7 foot, and center 7'3". So no more 6'8 point guards, man. It's gonna be interesting to see what the meta is this year in 2K, man. I'm super excited for that, man. 
Another person asked Zach, are there new build archetype names in NBA 2K25? His answer was yes, there are over 100 new possible archetype names that can be discovered. Some of my favorites are Rim Attacker, Small Boy Ball Ford, that's fire name, Swiss Army Knife, and Junkyard Guard. So it shouldn't be as much, you know what I'm saying, meta this shit, like I said, but the, you know, the 2K community, you know, they brain, you know what I'm saying, they're not going to really, you know what I'm saying, care about having a unique name or something like that. They just want you some. That, that, you know, they can go go out, you know what I'm saying, they can see a YouTuber, you know what I'm saying, post their build, you know what I'm saying, oh, this is the best build in the game, of course they're going to make it, so, you know. But I always have encouraged everybody to make builds according to their play style, you know what I'm saying. That's, like, one of the biggest things, I you know what I'm saying, especially this year. You need to make a build to how you play it. That's how you have the most fun in the game. Don't be afraid to have fun, you know what I'm saying. As long as you're able to play team basketball with your teammates, y'all going to win a lot of games. Somebody had another question for Zach. He says, does my career progress progress the games need to unlock takeover levels four and five? His answer was yes. Playing the NBA career games, excluding practice drills, will count towards unlocking takeover levels. Remember, you will unlock level four by activating level three in 10 games and level five by activating level four in 15 games. Takeover levels unlocks does carry over between saves. So once you unlock level five on one bill it'll be unlocked to all your other bills which is a w another question for zach was what advantage do shorter bills have this year shorter bills are, and his answer was are a consistent subject for discussion like us it is clear that a shorter bill while likely faster quicker and better with better handles has a hard time getting off a viable shot against lengthy, lengthy defenders this made it very difficult ultimately to succeed as a small score we are giving more wiggle room to smalls in the builder in addition we're introducing a new badge called mini marksman which allows the smaller shooter 63 or shorter to shoot more effectively against tall defenders if we had a badge like that what was, i forgot what uh was it called it was in 2k21 it was a uh oh man i forgot what it's called y'all know exactly what i'm talking about if y'all know the answer to it uh put it in the comment section below Another question somebody had for Zach was, do cap breakers transfer across saves? Can you change them? Cap breakers are a user-based prize, so once earned, you can apply them to any old save or new. When a cap breaker is applied to an attribute, it is permanent for that save. One of our favorite parts about cap breakers is that they contribute to badge, takeover, and animation attribute thresholds. On that cap breaker menu itself, as you temporarily increase cap breakers, the game will call out the exact features that are unlocked if you apply them. So with that, you can make informed decisions about where you like to apply your cap breakers. So I, I see a lot of people, um, you know what I'm saying, taking their time off the build this year. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was saying, like, make your own build to how you play, especially this year, because you want to be able to, you know what I'm saying, adjust that cap breaker to where you can get that legend badge. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a whole bunch of different play styles this year, and I'm super excited to see that, man. And because of that fact, it makes for, you know what I'm saying, not repetitive gameplay. Like, people can play the game to how they want to. It don't always have to be, you know what I'm saying, pick a role. It don't always have to be ISO, you know what I'm saying. People free, should be able to choose how they want to play the game. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's a, a W. And the final question was... From Baluba, oh, for Baluba. Will Lethal Zones be in 2K25? Yes, the design is a little more fun too. Instead of automatically working on two zones and it lasts in one week, there are three versions, options to choose from. One week, one zone, two weeks, two zones, three weeks, three zones. For the weeks, three version, you'll face off against Lethal Shooters. So yes, Lethal Zones are back in 2K25. One week, you'll get one zone, Two weeks, you get another zone. In three weeks, you'll be able to get three zones after three weeks. You know what I'm saying? And you'll face off against Lethal Shooter for those three zones. I guess in the type of uh, shooter round. But that's all I got for you guys, man. If you guys enjoyed this type of content, make sure to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 4,000 subscribers, man. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. You guys take care.